Hey, wasn't that awesome? Well, guess what? I know why you couldn't hear it. Because I don't have my amp turned on. We're going to get to that in just a little bit. Now, you might be wondering, you know, I'm a photographer. I love traveling around the world taking pictures. You might be wondering, why is Rick Salmon playing an, an electric guitar in a DVD on Camera Raw? Well, I'll tell you why. Because the sound from an electric guitar has a lot in common with the raw file. Both need processing. And that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to come back and we'll let you hear the process sound from my guitar, but we're going to talk about raw capture right now. All raw files need processing, just like a negative needs processing. So, in effect, the raw file from your camera is your digital negative. Now, before we talk about processing that digital negative in camera raw, we really need to talk about raw capture. There are several things you really need to know. First, the histogram on the back of your camera is not the histogram for your raw file. It's a histogram for a JPEG rendition of that file. So, don't judge your exposure by the histogram. Okay? Promise? The same is true for your camera's overexposure warning. It's for a JPEG rendition of that file too. So in a scene like this, the overexposure warning may say that the water will be overexposed and washed out, when in reality, the data is there in the raw file. And by the way, the histogram in camera raw on your computer is not the histogram for the raw file. It's for the JPEG file. Second, the only camera settings that affect the raw file are the ISO speed, f-stop and shutter speed. You control all the other image attributes in camera raw. With the JPEG file, all the camera settings, such as the white balance, are applied and locked in. Third, camera raw has the amazing ability to recover overexposed highlights. Even so, you need to strive for the best possible exposure, as I did when I took this picture of Niagara Falls at night. Had the white water been overexposed and washed out, well, the photograph would have been a washout. Fourth, raw files have a wider exposure latitude than JPEG files, which helps us get great images of scenes that contain good highlights and shadow details, as illustrated in this picture I took at Arches National Park in Utah. Fifth, raw files contain more data than JPEG files. JPEG files toss away one-third or more of the data, without even asking you. In this photograph of an African eagle owl, the largest owl in the world, by the way, some of the tossed data may have resulted in a loss of detail in the talons. Man, am I glad I have a two gigabyte card. I'll tell you why. Because raw files take up a lot more space on a memory card than JPEG files. So if you're going to travel far away from home, be sure you have enough memory cards to, that's right, record your memories. Speaking about taking up space, think about the digital darkroom. You want to have a lot of hard drive space, I recommend an accessory hard drive. That way you could store all your pictures off your computer. Get the accessory hard drive and get more RAM. I recommend at least a gigabyte of RAM. If you don't do that, you're not going to be able to process your images like really quickly and have a lot of fun as fast as I do. You can probably tell I'm a little hyper, but seriously, you really need more RAM, at least a gigabyte. Well, I guess I just want to leave you with one more thought. And here it is, raw rules. So, you ready to hear the process sound from my electric guitar? Here goes. And don't worry, I'm not going to give up my day job. <laughs>